What's going on YouTube? My name's Trey Kepsel and this is Elk Motorsports. What's going on y'all? I had a question asked by one of my subscribers named Don to talk a little bit about the headlights that I have and the winch that I have. Y'all know that I like to keep it personal. The channel's still real young, so anytime I get a question, I like to make a little video trying to answer the question the best I can. So I'm just going to give y'all a rundown of the headlights that I have, some of the features they have, how I installed it, where you can get a set, also the type of winch that I'm using, um, I will also kind of give you a rundown of the actual bumper and where I got it from and why I modified the winch the way I did. So let's go ahead and get to it. Alright guys, well these are the headlights that I have. They're just a generic dual projector headlight that have low and high beam. The top projector is your low beam and then your high beam is the low beam with addition of this lower projector that make the high beam. You actually can adjust them through the stock uh, screws and the way I installed them, check it out right here, they're a seven inch sealed beam but the only thing I had to do was this back portion. I believe it's just like a rectifier, it's just kind of a mechanism to kind of bump the voltage so that way you can get the brighter light. These actually shine at 5000 K which is supposed to be equivalent to sunlight so it's a pure white light. Back here I just had to see if y'all can see I just had to kind of modify this back ring to accommodate this uh, rectifier portion. It has your standard plug but this actual end does not plug into the pigtail. There is a LED CAN bus. So it's like a little box that has this same three prong receptacle and then you plug in your headlight pigtail into it. So it is really just a plug and play. So the setup I had before, I didn't have the stock sealed beam headlight. I actually had bought these. They kind of uh, emulate a modern day headlight and instead of being just a sealed beam they actually let you use an H4 bulb which is pretty common on most cars and they were just a plug and play into the stock pigtail <clears throat> but the thing that they're supposed to do instead of the stock sealed beam having all those reflectors on the lens kind of diminishing the distance that the light will shine it has a round reflector that the headlight bulb reflects off of back on the back to all the reflective angled portions that project it back out. But this headlight is still that dim yellow light that comes stock on the Samurai. When I had those headlights, I actually didn't have a bumper. So I didn't have these driving lights. And I didn't see any sort of aftermarket bumper that I was really into and I was still really new to the samurai scene at the time so I didn't know about Zeus Off-Road. I didn't want to spend the money on Low Range's bumper. I think Low Range had just come out with their modular bumper at the time which was really nice but to piece it out the way that I wanted it was really expensive and I just wasn't in the market for spending that kind of money. Funny enough I did all this work to the samurai and I guess I kind of got near the end of the budget at the time, so I didn't really want to spend that much money. So for uh, probably like five years, I rolled around without a bumper. So down here we have the beach and it's not lit. You know, it's uh, an actual national seashore and there's no lighting whatsoever. It's, com it's completely pitch black out there. So I looked into getting a set of projectors that were just like this, that had the halo ring. Well, they were from like a big name brand company and they were like $500 a piece and I did not want to spend that. Well, around that time I'd gotten on Facebook and there are a lot of companies or people that have their own lighting companies or, you know, you got guys like 
uh, Dr. Z, who you can contact on Facebook to get the suspension set up, all kinds of stuff. I didn't know that you could do that kind of stuff on Facebook until I actually had gotten on there. If I had done it way back when I first built this, there's a lot of things I would have done differently in the beginning. I would have just circumvented going about doing what I did and then eventually changing. I would have just gone straight to everything I did. Probably would have gotten these headlights right off the bat instead of buying that kit. But I got these because I had already owned like some HID kits that were 5,000K on motorcycles and the amount of visibility you got was just dramatic. And these are 5K equivalents just in LED, which uses less energy. So I bought these and I'm very pleased with them. I'll turn all the lights off and I'll show you all the low beam and the high beam real quick so that way you can see how bright they are. Here's the LED cam buses. You can see the pigtail in that plugs into the actual back of the headlight. And then back inside there, you can see the other pigtail that plugs into the headlight pigtail from the vehicle. The only thing I did whenever I did these headlights is I actually put in an actual headlight relay. That's something that I added. It is highly advised. You're actually getting a 12 volt from the actual battery. It actually gets a fuse right here. So where to actually get these headlights from? I don't remember where I got them from originally. It was so many years ago, but I do know of a really reputable aftermarket light vendor that you can actually contact and you can get all of his contact information from Facebook. It's called Strange LED. The owner's name is Kevin. If you actually just search Strange LED on Facebook, it'll take you to his Facebook page and you can get his phone number. You'll talk to Kevin directly. You can also get his email address. He has really, really good prices on like the 42 inch light bar for the uh, windshield light bar bracket. He has the pod lights. He has the flush mount ones that actually just screw on. He has this type of uh, LED pods. He also has this style of headlight. He even has this style of headlight with the actual marker halo that will actually function as a blinker as well, which is really nice. And then he has like the multi LED one. He has a lot of them. The box that these come in, actually on the side show you a whole bunch of variations. And I believe he actually carries all of these as well. So, it's a really nice headlight. As you can see, they're really bright. They, they're so bright that I actually don't need to use these driving lights. I did them because I didn't know how I felt about a light bar, and at the time, I didn't know about the windshield light bar brackets that uh, some of the guys on Facebook make and sell. So, I went ahead and went with this. The bumper, that I have right here is Dr. Z's do-it-yourself stubby bumper. He gives you everything and you weld it up yourself. It's actually a really cheap alternative to having a bumper made if you have the skill and the tools for welding so you can weld your own up. And I just cut these holes out and I put these lights in here. And it's also a winch bumper, which is what we're gonna talk about next. So guys, the winch that I have is a 8,000 pound Traveler synthetic winch. I've actually got it all taken apart because of the overheating issue I was having and the reason why I did that is It comes with like a really old-school shroud That's the only thing about this winch that I really kind of think it separates it from like a Smitty Bill or a Warren It originally has this plate and then it has your controller And then it has this big old honking cover covers it up and as you can tell it blocks more than half of the inlet airflow now there are guys that have this winch that have this and don't have a problem with overheating like I said at the time before I even put the turbo on because I had that stock radiator and it was clogged I was running really hot and then after I put the turbo it would run even warmer than it should dramatically warmer like 
30 degrees hotter than it did whenever I was in A. And when I was naturally aspirated before, I was running over 200 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too hot for this motor anyways. So in an attempt to bring that temperature down, I started with the cheapest things I could. So I removed the shroud, I removed the controller, and I removed this top plate. When I first got this winch, I hooked it all up and I ran it through its little paces and it's an awesome winch. But at the time, because they were discontinuing and they were taking it off the shelves, I was able to pick this thing up for like $150 on clearance. So that's the reason why I bought this winch. It's actually my very first winch and I mean that's a stellar deal. I mean even if the winch was trash, it wasn't really a bad price point to take the chance. And there's a lot of other guys that at the time, a few years ago when this was going on, a lot of guys on Facebook, they did the same thing. They bought this winch. They might have already had a winch and they're like, oh man, that's like a really good deal for a winch. <clears throat> the other thing I should say about this winch, so this Dr. Z stubby bumper, it's hold for a Smitty built bumper. Well, this thing didn't need any modification to fit this Traveler winch in. So it will bolt up to any place a Smitty built bumper will bolt up to. So that's a really nice feature too. And whenever you take it all apart like this, it really resembles the Warrens and the Smitty Belts. You know, a lot of, there's some Warrens that have a bracket so you can relocate that winch control box around and pull it off. Some people even pull off that control box for the Smitty Belts and they relocate them underneath the hood, which was something that I was gonna do anyways. You know, it comes with a weatherproof controller with plenty of lead to plug into the front. The only thing I will say about this winch is your, if you're running a stock Suzuki Samurai battery, you're not gonna be able to use that. I tried to find it in the manual, but whenever I was doing my research on this winch to make sure that it would have been worth the investment, it said you either need like a 650 or I wanna say a 700 cold cranking amp battery which I already have a battery that's, that does 775 coil cranking amps. I just got an O'Reilly's uh, AGM battery. So that wasn't a concern for me. I already had the cold cranking amps required to run this. So the most important thing to pick out whenever you're selecting a winch is the style of electric motor that it has. And there's really two types of electric motors. You have a permanent magnet style of electric motor, and then you have a series wound style electric motor. Now the series wound is the better one. The permanent magnet, the way it works is, is just like the name implies. There's actually a cylinder that is a magnet. It's usually two halves. My air horn compressor, that motor is a permanent magnet motor. So that, that outer housing around the stator portion of the electric motor is actual magnets. And that's how the magnetic field is generated. It's generated with a north and a south pole. Well, every time you use that electric motor, the magnet loses a little bit of its charge. And then you use it again, it loses a little bit more. And then it'll lose a little bit more. And then it'll lose a little bit more until there is no more magnetic charge left in the magnet and then the motor won't work anymore. Versus a series wound has a whole bunch of copper windings I believe it's similar in design to like an alternator, but instead of being belt driven, <clears throat> you know, you, you charge, you, you send an, an electrical current from the battery to the copper windings, and that generates a magnetic field, which in turn will turn the motor. So you don't have a magnet that will just dissipate its magnetic field over time. Even just sitting, they'll dissipate their magnetic field. This will not. This type of motor is a series wound motor. It's 2.7 horsepower, which that really is just kind of your ability. That's kind of like your efficiency. So, you know, the motor might get warmer or really its, its spooling speed is decreased with a lower horsepower motor, which in turn, because the lower horsepower motor um, the spool speed is lower, it's got to spool longer, so therefore it gets hotter faster. But a lot of guys have gotten this 
winch and have not had a problem with it whatsoever. I was able to hook it up whenever I first used it, hooked it to the Samurai and it pulled it no problem. Uh, I also got a snatch block from Tractor Supply that's a Traveler brand. So the idea behind the, the snatch block is it doubles your pulling capacity and the reason why that's kind of important to go about getting is the, so the working capacity of this winch says 8,000 pounds. Well, that's max pulling capacity. And the way you actually do that is the number of wraps you have on this drum. So your max pulling capacity is with one wrap on this drum. So this has obviously got multiple wraps because it's got a long rope. So with all these wraps layered on top of each other, whenever it pulls it, the rope is tightening down on itself. It's not on the solid piece of drum and it's putting tension on that rope. So that decreases. So I wanna say at like five wraps, this is actually half capacity. It's only 4,000. Until you get all the way down to one wrap on the drum, which would pretty much be almost at your limit. You have to actually have five complete wraps to run this. Not, not five wraps on the drum, just five individual wraps. That's what the manufacturer says to be within safe working limit of this winch. <clears throat> so let's say you don't have to go that far and you've got five wraps on this drum and you're only good for 4,000 pounds. If you get the snatch block, what you'll do is you'll hook that snatch block up to whatever you want, whatever you're gonna use to pull yourself out, whether it be a tree or another vehicle. You run this, actually I'll show y'all. So I figured I'd just show y'all, this is a lot easier to demonstrate. So a snatch block essentially is just a single shiv. And it separates like this, so that way you can get the wire rope in and then you'll bring it back and then you know, you'll tie a sling or a shackle up to the back of a truck or wrap a sling with a shackle around a tree or whatever and you'll hook it here. You'll bring this wire rope through this shiv and then you would bring it back like, you know, if you had a, if you had a clevis and you had a shackle or if you have one of those hitch mounts, uh, shackle mounts, you bring it back and loop it here. And the whole idea behind that is now you have two ropes. So if your max capacity is 4,000 pounds, this one rope is pulling 4,000 pounds, but then as it loops back, that one rope can pull 4,000 pounds, essentially doubling your pulling capacity. So now your winch can pull 8,000. Or if you're down to your one wrap and your winch is good for 8,000 pounds, you can pull 8,000 pounds on one rope and 8,000 pounds on the other. Now you've got 16,000 pounds of pulling force if you're that stuck or if you need to pull a heavy truck out or something like that. That is the benefit to having a snatch block, which this thing is like 20 bucks, I think. And it's just real simplified design. Like I said, it's a simple shiv. Uh, those type of mechanics work with cranes, with what I do. I mean, that's the reason why when you see that main block, it's got a whole bunch of shivs. That wire rope may only be good to pull 16,000 pounds, but the crane is rated for like 100 tons. Well, 100 tons is obviously more than 16,000 pounds. How do you achieve that? You achieve that by running it, by uh, reaving it through all those shivs. So this essentially is a one shiv block. You know, it's the same idea. You would, you know, here's your winch, like on a crane. Wire runs through here and out the other side, back to here, anchored down, and you could put a hook here, bam. You have two wire ropes doubling your pulling force. So, this winch is a very good winch, uh, especially for the price. Even the um, standard wire rope version of this is a good winch and it's dramatically less expensive than a lot of these other winches out there especially if you're looking at like a warren and you can even talk to these guys on facebook you know they've had warrens go out on them you know warrens aren't really what they used to be anymore uh smitty built is actually a really reputable company and their winches are relatively inexpensive the nice thing about these are you know just like this one i got it on clearance for 150 dollars which is a steal for a winch especially 8,000 pounds. A lot of guys speak very highly of the Badland winches, 
that you can get from Harbor Freight. So, you know, just remember that whenever you go to select a winch, you really want to look at the style of electric motor it has and your rated capacity. You know, and even if you wanted to just get a, say, 4,000 pound winch, if you've got a snatch block, well, you've essentially made an 8,000 pound winch. So, the only thing that I would be leery on getting a winch that's lower capacity, it might not be the motor or the size of the actual winch itself that's derating it, it might be the size of the wire rope itself. So that might be the limiting factor. But if you're using a snatch block, you don't really have to worry about that derated size because you have two wire ropes essentially working together. So just a thought to keep in mind whenever you're picking out a winch. Well, Don, I hope that answers your question. And for anybody else out there, if you have a question or there's something you're not sure about, ask me. If there's something that you see on the channel that I'm doing and you're not sure why I'm doing it and I don't really explain it, just ask me to spend more time on it. The purpose of this channel is to try to take as much information that exists on the internet for the Suzuki Samurai and put it in one place with a visual learning aid. Whenever I was learning how to work on the Suzuki Samurai, whenever I was learning all the quirks and the little things, I really wish that, you know, YouTube was as big as it was now back then, but it wasn't. So I didn't have the, I guess the advantage that a lot of you guys now have coming into this or already being here. You can also be sure that if I'm doing something and I'm not 100% sure, I'm gonna put it in the comments and I'm gonna ask you guys because you might have knowledge that I haven't dealt with yet or I don't have that I really could use and together we can share that with everybody else. That's the point of this community and this channel. I wanna thank you all so much for watching this video. If it was content that you enjoyed watching, be sure to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so that way you can stay up to date on what I've got going on in the shop. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.